Question comes up. Are, do, do you consider uh, a woman who has an abortion to be a murderer? That's a pretty key idea. Um, no. Uh, a murderer is someone who kills for some wicked reason and, and furthermore knows what he or she does. Um, someone who has an abortion, I have to believe, doesn't believe that they're really killing a human. They believe they're killing some cells. People say, why can't I get rid of these, these cells that are an embryo any more than I can get rid of, like, they're here. You just, you know, just scratch your skin. You're, you're killing a couple of skin cells. And that's allowed, isn't it? Yeah? Yes, unfortunately, the skin cells, you know, are slightly different in that they don't, um, evolve into personhood. You know? Um, I mean, if you had a Siamese twin and you're, like, attached at the shoulder or something, and you, like, shoot your twin in the face, you're like, well, he was attached to me, therefore... No. Well, what if the Siamese twin was mute, and you couldn't tell anyone that he was conscious? Well, no, no, you still can't tell. Well, what if he was mute, and really small, and furthermore, inside the body, and therefore you couldn't see him, and therefore... You know, it's like, where does this line draw? It becomes like some cells or some things or some, you know, very, very, very tricky. Um, how how do we define? Uh, there's a there's a process going at least you know nine months, uh, making uh, the child, and we all agree that killing the child child is wrong. Like, a t like an infant, just like swallowing in your arms, and you're like, don't kill this thing. Everyone agreed? Yes, we're all very much agreed on that. Which is why the pro-lifers are so fierce in their trying to stop abortions. Because, like, you know, I thought we had agreed to this, people. Murder is wrong. But then, it's not murder, but it's the killing of a person. But it's not a person. Is it a person? At what point does a does a thing become a person? Because if you'd like to go all the way back in time, you know, <laughs> uh, clearly you get to a point where it's not like a person. It's just like it's just like you know something. It's two separate people, eventually, <laughs> that haven't even met each other, you know. And then eventually we get to conception and then uh, the process and all that. Uh, generally, or almost always, the pro-choicers like to say that uh, birth is the dividing line, uh, and that before birth, if you destroy this thing, that's okay, it's perfectly within your rights. After birth, if you destroy this thing, you're a murderer, we're taking you to jail. The question is, um, what happens on that dividing line that makes this thing into a person? Precisely. Uh, like, woman goes into labor. She's lucky, maybe maybe uh, the baby's out in two hours or something. You know, I don't know. And uh, it travels approximately two feet. You know, from inside the woman to over here where the doctor is. What changes in the middle is my question. Because... Before the birth, you know, at the beginning of this process, she hasn't quite gone into labor yet. This thing has eyes and toes and fingers. Got a little spinal cord, pancreas, spleen. Got a brain, ears, legs, heart, rib cage. I mean, hopefully it has all these things, otherwise you might have a problem with your baby. You know, it, it's, it's even got the spark of life. It kicks. It kicks. <laughs> In two hours, in two feet, this thing, which was just a collection of cells before that just so happened to make the shape of a human, is now suddenly a human. Where did the spark of life come in, precisely? Where did it, like, I, I heard arguments that, like, oh, well, you know, it, it's not connected to the mother anymore. Well, that's silly, you know, it's a Siamese twin argument, you know. Two people that are connected physically can still be two people, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and someone said that uh, 
Well, the baby takes its first breath. I'm like, so we define life as to whether or not you are currently inhaling oxygen? Because... I'm not alive! Until I... <gasps> breathe in. Okay, now... I'm <laughs> I mean... Yeah, kind of, but... If someone was, like, on a breath machine, like an older person, and they're, like, sick or hurt or something, and they have a machine to breathe for them... Still counts as a person, right? Particularly if they have a chance of recovery. Now, there's there, there's a whole definition of a, what if you're like permanently comatose? You know, then then what? Then 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 there's the thing where you can partially unplug somebody. And there, there's another deal with this: um, is killing a thing versus letting it die versus people say, look, uh, some people say, look, even if the child, even if the embryo counts as a child. You can't force the woman to care for it. It's as if uh, there's someone, a uh, dialysis machine, you know, for the kidneys, and they needed someone else to, like, donate blood to this, and you, like, kidnapped someone and forced the blood out of them. Well, first of all, people can say, well, if the woman uh, consented to intercourse, then, like, she must have known the chance of having a child, and so she kind of got into this willingly. Then, of course, there's the whole rape issue, which we are inevitably keep coming back to, um, in which case, that is sort of like kidnapping the person, putting them on the dialysis machine, which we're not allowed to do, generally speaking. The thing with the dialysis machine is, theoretically, we can get someone else to do that job, hopefully a volunteer. <laughs> um, in the case of the woman that's pregnant, and there's a fetus embryo thingamajig in there. She's the only one that can bear it to term. Until we invent that magic artificial womb thing, she's the only one. Oh. You know, what, what... <sighs> two hours and two feet. What happens? It's disconnected? No, oh, it doesn't. Someone told me it's it because it's, it's, a, it's the baby's dependence on the mother that counts. I'm like, yeah, but if there's a woman living out in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, you know, and, like, she's got a toddler, and the toddler depends on her for survival because, like, she feeds it, as most toddlers are, you know, fed. They don't, they don't go out, like, hunting or something. A toddler doesn't go to the supermarket. It has to be fed by, you know, mother or father or whomever. Someone has to give it food. It's dependent. It's still a person. Or furthermore, back to our old uh, comatose patient, you know? He's still a person. At least so long as there's a chance of recovery. Right? And then there's the dialysis thing of the... Well, in dialysis, we're just... You know, in that scenario, we would be letting the person die. In this scenario, we'd be actively killing the child. And there's the old active killing versus passively letting die thing that also gets pretty weird. Um, we do we do all agree, I think, that uh, if the life of the mother is in jeopardy, well, that's okay. Then, then we have the scales of justice. The life of the child, the life of the mother, if it's got to be one or the other, I don't know. I, I can't make that judgment. So, yeah, you know, I, I can understand that. Here's a question. How much jeopardy does the mother's life have to be in? Like, if there's a 100% chance that she dies if we don't have this abortion, clearly, because justice. What if there's a 90% chance that she dies? Or 50, or 10, or 1, or 0 .00, like, you know, if there's any chance, how much, the, is there a line we draw there? You know, what, is, what does the law have to say about that? As it currently stands, if a woman feels uh, at all inconvenienced by the pregnancy, she's allowed to terminate it. People, some people are like, well, could we have, like, some standard? 